Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. Hot, sunny, almost 100 degrees. Today I want to talk about birds. Birds in your garden, wild birds, how important it is to give them water. Now you don't have to feed them if you don't want to be feeding them. That's up to you. But if you could put out a bowl of water, you may not want to make a lot of fountains or buy fountains. That's, again, you have to do what will work for you. But if you've got a balcony, a deck, a garden, any place that you see birds, sometimes even where you don't see birds, putting out water brings the birds in. Now with this heat, we've been 100 and we're gonna be that way for the next week or thereabout. We'll probably be close to that for the next month off and on. It is so important to put out water for them to get. I'll tell you a story in a minute what happened the other day. Now if you're home during the day and you don't work or you work at night or you just whenever you're even going to work, it doesn't hurt to put out a whole bunch of ice just stick it out in the fountain because it will keep it cool for hours and even once it melts it will help keep the water cool i come outside and periodically toss ice in a lot of different fountains and let me tell you something the birds do appreciate that if you can put a bowl of water in the sun and one in the shade because some birds prefer the sunlight open air other ones don't mind the shade go ahead and do that what I was going to tell you the other day, what happened was it was about 98 degrees and at five o'clock on my deck, I went out there to check on the birds, probably drop ice in and check on the hummingbirds. A robin came yes, to me, a, ba a young robin, I was a baby, fully feathered, what came to me. And I actually was talking to it and I put out my hand and it started nibbling on my fingers. It was starving. Aww. What might have happened is I do believe it was hand fed and released and probably released properly, but with the heat, it couldn't find enough water. I don't know how, but maybe, you know, it came from somewhere else and it didn't know where any fountains were, or any water was or any food. So it actually came to me. I did some phone calls to Fish and Wildlife, couldn't get a hold of anybody that would take in the robin. So we kept the robin overnight in the house and I hand fed it. Knowing a bit about birds and not having anything prepared for a robin, the best thing at that point was grubs, which we didn't have, worms, which is really hard to find, believe it or not, because the Orioles clean everything up. But what I did have was soaked dog food. And so I soaked that, had that, and he just loved that. So obviously he was being fed in that fashion and he knew what it was and he ate really good like a champ gave him blueberries, gave him chopped up apples. He was kind of picky on what he wanted to eat, but he really liked the dog food. He didn't drink at first, but I think he was overwhelmed from the heat. By the next morning, he was doing really good. He wanted out. He was picking up food on his own and he wasn't scared. I could reach my hand in. He'd come right up to me, but he definitely wanted out of the cage. And knowing that robins, you see them a lot in the morning, they move around really early. Remember the early bird that catch, catches the worm? That's a robin. So what we did was, since he was now picking food off the ground, we did bring in some earthworms, which he wasn't interested in, probably because he wanted out. We went ahead, I opened the cage door and left the cage out. He slowly, very slowly came out and he looked around and he waited and then he did go into the avocado tree that's near the deck. He sat there for a while and then he took off towards Gary's garden, which is a good thing because we have a lot of berries out there that he can find because they're real big on berries. And we also have Brazilian pepper trees that they eat the berries off of. So he went in that direct direction. I was assuming that if he couldn't find enough, he would come back and that's my hope. But the point I'm making is sometimes they don't know where to locate water or locate food. So if you're not putting food out, put water out. And the big thing is if you're making fountains with me and we're making so many fountains, and I've got so many more great ideas coming and oh my gosh, you're gonna just go wild. You thought the turkey baster was good? And the K-cup? I got a few others coming too. The point is they don't always know where it is. So add in some ice to those. If you've got a bucket, open up the lid, drop in some ice. You can't even add in too much because in this heat, it will slowly melt and it will be okay. So if you've got a bowl, drop in some ice and the birds will love you for it. So I hope I've given you some tips on birds and keeping them cool for the summer. And if you can, move some of them out of the sun or at least where they get sunshade and kind of have them 
sporadically around in different places so the birds can pick and choose the type of fountains and which fountains they want to use. With that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.